Hello, and welcome to this introductory webinar for America's Seed Fund, powered by the National Science Foundation. My name is Lindsay Portnoy, and I'm a program director in the NSF SBIR STTR, and my portfolio topic areas include learning and cognition technologies, augmented and virtual reality, and human-computer interaction. And it is my pleasure to walk through this pre-recorded information to give you a bit of background on NSF's SBIR STTR. STTR program, and to help you prepare some questions by giving you a deeper dive and invite you to please join a live webinar with myself or any of my colleagues at one of our upcoming events. It's important to note that this is a recorded webinar that is being recorded in June of 2024, and all information is focused on our newest solicitation for 2024. It's also important for me to share with you that our website has a large range of very useful information. That website you will see at the bottom of each of the following slides is seedfund.nsf.gov. On our website, you will find a range of upcoming events. Please take what you learned from today and use this information to bring your questions to a live session. Uh, it's also important to share that we have a robust FAQ section which answers many of the questions that we hear from PIs on a regular basis. So I highly recommend that you please read through our most current solicitation thoroughly and bring your questions to a live open office hours event, either virtually or in person that best fits your calendar. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, uh, who are we? We are America's Seed Fund powered by US National Science Foundation, and we fund startups that are seeking to transform high risk technologies into products and services with commercial and societal impact. We fund approximately $230 million plus annually to startup companies, and we fund approximately 400 startups annually. Uh, what we offer is a series of phased funding up to $2 million over several years in non-dilutive funding for research and development that helps companies to de-risk their technology and position them for commercial success. Before I share exactly what we're looking for in our companies, I wanna share a little bit of data about the companies that we do fund. So what follows are some overview data points. Uh, as I shared previously, we seek to support truly innovative startups. And what this often looks like is based on our fiscal year 2023, 62% of the companies that we support are new to NSF. 94% of them have less than 10 employees and 80% of those companies that we fund were created in the last five years. A little about the portfolio and outcomes, as you'll see noted on the slide, these are figures that were pulled from PitchBook, so this is publicly available data. Between the years of 2014 and 2023, we funded approximately 4,000 companies and have seen many equity and exits from NSF funding funded companies including approximately $28 billion in follow-on funding from private investments and approximately 450 company exits, whether it's acquisitions, mergers, or IPOs. Again, please note that these are only the publicly available data. A little bit of information about the type of technology that we fund. NSF's SBIR STTR program is novel in the sense that we are tech agnostic. Uh, topic fit is not required. However, we do have a variety of topic areas for you to choose from. Please note you also have the opportunity to fit into the other topic area. We do welcome all areas of technology, but the core uh, essential component is that you do have a significant R&D work and potential for commercial and societal impact. Please note that clinical trials or work on Schedule One controlled substances are not supported by our program. As you can see here, by FY2020 funding, uh, we do fund in a variety of domains. And so when we sort of chunk them by category, you can see that, for instance, in this year, 28% of the work uh, that was supported was in the life sciences whereas 19% was in information technology, and you hopefully also will note that in other topics, we have 3% of our allocated funding from 2021. So now that I've shared a little bit of background, I wanna to talk to you about how the program works, how the funding, uh, how, how companies can apply rather. So as I shared previously, we have two phases of funding. 
The first phase of funding, phase one, is for proof of concept, where you and your team are working to de-risk a highly technical, innovative concept from six to eight months, 18 months rather. Uh, this funding is for $305,000. And again, you have six to 18 months. And really what you're looking to do is to de-risk this highly technical uh, innovation. If you are successful in de-risking the innovation and you meet your success metrics, then you are eligible to apply for a phase two. And in phase two, you're seeking up to two years or 24 months of funding to build out your prototype and prepare to be commercially successful. And that funding in the new solicitation is for $1,250,000. Once you uh, are successful in phase two, you are also eligible for a series of supplemental funds including one that's listed here, the phase 2B, where NSF matches one to two for partners and commercial success. Now, this is a really critical slide, so I'm going to take some time to walk through it and share with you a little bit about what we're looking for in the companies who are applying to our program. Again, this is essential because what I have here are those four core areas of what we look for and then what makes you eligible for the program. So the first bullet point you see here, impact, commercial, and societal. Uh, by bringing your truly groundbreaking and innovative technologies to the market, the companies that we seek have the potential to significantly disrupt the respective industries and hopefully lead to increased competition, improve products and services, and ultimately serve society, right? So that's that first impact uh, bullet point. Uh, also, successful commercialization of deep technology innovations leads to the creation of new markets. It drives economic growth and helps to create jobs across new sectors. It's in service of broader humanity. Uh, as these cutting edge solutions address genuine pressing problems faced by businesses and individuals, they truly have the capacity to enhance efficiency, productivity, and the quality of life for humans, uh, and leading to the widespread and societal benefits for all life. Again, the introduction of novel game-changing tech uh, is what we aspire to, to see, and these are texts that are going to further innovation and foster a culture of creativity and problem solving, hopefully that extends beyond the immediate impact of the specific product or service. Um, so the next bit here is technological innovation and technical risk. And this is a question we hear quite regularly. We're really looking for groundbreaking cutting edge technology. Innovations that completely um, you know, revolutionize the way things are done or how products and services are built. Uh, this is not about repurposing existing technology for new applications or combining existing technologies. It's really about uncharted territory where the feasibility of turning technology into a marketable product or service is still uncertain. And that's where we see that risk. So what your company aims to, to deliver on uh, should be really unique, truly unique, unlike anything that is currently available on the market. Uh, we wanna see that there's significant risk involved and frankly, it might not work. So we seek what is called intellectual merit, technical merit. From your perspective, we're really looking about these profound technological innovations and a fresh approach that's grounded in new discoveries, innovation, engineering breakthroughs, there's, we're, we're, we're not looking for incremental improvement on existing methods or straightforward tech. It's a completely novel way of doing things. Uh, and at this stage, it's unproven. There's no guarantee that your approach is going to be successful in translating into a viable product or service. So, you know, to gauge the level of technical risk, you might want to ask yourself if another team with the right expertise and background in your field had the same idea, would they struggle to make it work or would it be a relatively straightforward process? And if it's the latter, it might not meet the level of risk we're looking for in our program. The next bullet here is market pull. Uh, we encourage you to bring us ideas that push the boundaries of what's possible. And we do recognize that many of our projects are still in the nascent stages of establishing that problem solution fit. Most of the companies we fund are in those stages. So you may not have fully achieved that product market fit with a large customer base, but we expect that you've conducted sufficient research to understand that assuming your solution does work as intended as you are able to de-risk it, 
that it will address a genuine problem faced by your target audience and a problem that's significant enough that, that they'll be willing to pay for the solution. And it will enable you to build a sustainable business around that revenue that is generated from those transactions. The last is potential for scale. Uh, it's crucial to recognize that even without a fully fledged solution, this can serve as a stepping stone towards a commercially oriented enterprise. So if your primary objective is to develop a new product and bring it to market, that aligns perfectly with our goals. However, if the main motivation is to pursue research purely for the sake of curiosity and enjoyment rather than the intention of commercializing the tech, it might not be the right fit for our program. So we really want to see teams that have come together with a singular focus to take this innovative technology, to validate it and bring it to market, uh, rather than, than juggling multiple technologies simultaneously. So that's what we're looking for uh, in a nutshell. And on the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see the eligibility. It's important to share that our program is open only to U.S.-based for-profit small businesses, which is defined as under 500 employees. Our applicants must be majority owned and controlled by U.S. citizen or permanent residents, and all work must be done within the United States. Also essential to share that your project principal investigator or your PI must spend a majority of their time employed by the awardee company during the project. This turns out to uh, at least 40 hours a week or 173 hours or six months as an employee of the company. So how do you apply? Uh, the application process starts with a project pitch and from the project pitch is how you move forward. So the funding process and timeline again starts with a project pitch, which is accepted at any point in any time. Typically you hear back from NSF within one month or four weeks. If you are invited, then you may submit a full proposal. You may submit a proposal for an upcoming deadline, but you must submit a proposal within one year of that invitation. And then the last step, of course, is that your proposal is reviewed and a decision is made. NSF decision times are approximately six months after the deadline. Starting with the project pitch. What is the project pitch? I shared quite a bit about what we are looking for in the slides uh, previously, so I'm not going to reiterate it here, but essentially the project pitch is a three-page written synopsis of your innovative idea. So Entrepreneurs will receive feedback to see if their work is a good fit for NSF funding before they write a full proposal. You have 500 words in two of the categories and 250 words in the other two of these, these areas to share with us what your technology innovation is, what the objectives and challenges will be for you to de-risk that technology, what the market opportunity is, which will give you a chance to share with us that you've thought about the commercial potential, as well as the company and the team to demonstrate the expertise that is on hand to de-risk this technology if you are invited to submit to a phase one proposal. A uh, fine print on the project pitch is that while pitches are accepted anytime, that would be 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, companies may only submit one project pitch per quarter. Uh, we follow typical quarters here where we're looking at October 1 to December 31st, January 1st, March 31st, April 1 to July 30th, or July 1 to September 30th. So you may only submit one pitch per quarter, and only one pitch can be under review at a time. So you cannot submit multiple project pitches at once, uh, and no government registrations or official company formation is required to submit a pitch. This will become clearer in a moment. So to submit this pitch, uh, you do not need additional uh, registration. However, after you do submit your project pitch, you might receive requests for additional information where you might be asked to provide greater detail on the technology that you aim to uh, uh, de-risk in a phase one uh, Either way, at the end of your submission, you will know if your project is a good fit or if it is not a good fit. If it's a good fit, NSF will send an official email invitation to submit a full proposal. And NSF will also include feedback and designate a specific topic area for the project for which you must submit that project. Uh, my suggestion to you is to please take the feedback that you receive from the expert or program director in service of your successful proposal. Uh, if the project is not a good fit, a rationale for the decision by the managing program director or expert will be provided, and another project pitch may be submitted in the next quarter, as I shared previously, which is typically several months later. 
in submitting a full proposal, I would encourage you strongly to please read through that solicitation, the SBIR STTR phase one solicitation in detail. Please note the suggested and recommended uh, page lengths for each of the sections. Please also uh, do the diligence to look through the FAQ page where quite a bit of information is shared about what makes a strong proposal and all sorts of questions that, that are typically asked that are answered very clearly there. Uh, please also try to attend an open office hours where you will take any of the questions that you have after listening to this overview today and you will ask live in person and get that answer that you need. Uh, you'll also need to register your company and key personnel in SAM.gov and research.gov. This was the distinction I was sharing earlier about the uh, pitch process versus the full proposal. And finally, once you've read the solicitation, once you've read the FAQ, once you've attended an open office hours, you should be well positioned to draft and submit your SBIR STTR phase one proposal. As shared previously, the third step, of course, is that proposal review and decision. All NSF program directors run the merit review process. For details on what that merit review process is, you should see the solicitation where you'll see that we're looking for intellectual merit, which is also included of technical merit, as well as broader societal impact, and lastly, commercial potential. Your program directors will combine a panel of experts that are technical and com commercial experts who will review the intellectual merit broader impact, and commercial potential of the phase one proposal. Now, it's important to note that oftentimes uh, NSF may ask for additional information if it is necessary during due diligence. Um, and a funding decision is typically made about six months after the deadline, uh, which is when all of those proposals are submitted. I want to invite you to please engage with us by either joining our mailing list or sign up to be a reviewer for National Science Foundation. You can find us on the links here, which are also on our page, seedfund.nsf.gov. Please do seek all of the resources that we provide to you. They are in service to you and in support of you writing the best possible proposal. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. We look forward to reading your pitch. Uh, please go ahead and get started and do be sure to reach out to sbir at nsf.gov with any questions you may have. I wish you the very best of luck and thank you again for your time today.